The quality of internet in Zimbabwe has just completely gone to the dogs. It's a literal state of emergency, and any option that shows the slightest promise is being treated like a messiah. Starlink is one of these services, and on their coverage map, they slated Zimbabwe as one of the countries receiving the service in 2023. They recently went live in Nigeria, and in Rwanda, it's being trialed in schools to see its viability, so it's also available there. So what about Zimbabwe? How long must we endure? On the Starlink website, they mentioned that the planned availability in Zimbabwe is 2023, pending regulatory approval. So naturally, we reach out to Potras, who informed us that Starlink has not yet inquired with them about setting up a service in Zimbabwe. We did also have some follow-up questions that are yet to be answered, which include the following. If Starlink or any service like it is to wish to come into Zimbabwe, what does Potras expect it to do or have in order for it to be allowed to operate? Will the international pricing Starlink is offering globally be the same in Zimbabwe? What is Potras' take on Starlink and other satellite internet providers like it regarding the future of internet reliability, accessibility, and affordability in Zimbabwe? So let's start with the first one. Any new telecommunications player in Zimbabwe has to go through Potras so they are registered and licensed. But the most important reason is that Potras regulates the airwaves in Zimbabwe and will need to ensure that whatever frequency spectrum Starlink uses for communication is actually available. Starlink uses the 10.7 to 12.7 GHz bands for its communication, which according to the Zimbabwe National Frequency Allocation Plan, falls neatly under the spectrum allocated for fixed satellite services. So the technical side of regulation seems to check out if Starlink is to be classified under the category of fixed satellite services. The only thing left will be an operating license which for VSAT services will look like this. Then the second question. So Starlink in Nigeria has assumed its fees in Nigeria's local currency, but interestingly enough, there are some currency conversion issues in Nigeria that seem very similar to those in Zimbabwe. There is an internationally recognized exchange rate of one US dollar to 460 Naira. However, just like in Zimbabwe, they have local currency cards that do not do online payments and USD prepay cards that are able to make online payments. And when you use these, the rate almost doubles to 740 Naira for every US dollar. So if Starlink maintains offering their service in US dollars, then the listed price of their service will be roughly what we can expect to fork out. But if they start listing the price in local currency, then it can swing either way. And usually the way where we end up paying more is where things will swing. The official pricing for Nigeria is 599 US dollars for the kit and 43 US dollars for the monthly subscription fee. This is not universal though, as Zimbabwean contact informed us that the total cost to get the kit to their doorstep set them back around 700 US dollars. And in America, monthly subs are 110 US dollars. So depending on your region, the pricing might be slightly different. Then we move on to question three. The internet situation in Zimbabwe is dreadful at best. The number of fault-based and performance-based internet outages Zimbabwe has experienced in the last three years alone has been frustrating. We talk about new players changing the space and making our internet more reliable, faster and cheaper, but we also need to look at the infrastructure. If a new MNO or ISP enters the space, they are using the same infrastructure as the already existing players and serving the same customer. So fundamentally, they will experience the same challenges that existing players are facing and their service will just end up being as bad. Starlink is very different from these at an infrastructure level. They have orbiting satellites that are of a different technology to those used by VSAT providers. VSAT makes use of geosatellites or geostationary satellites, meaning these satellites are matching the rotation of the Earth such that if we could see it, it would be as if it's just standing still up there above us in the sky. And they are also 35,785 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Starlink is using LEO or low Earth orbiting satellites and these are constantly moving and are 550 kilometers above the Earth's surface. So, similar but not the same in terms of technology. However, Starlink is for the most part not relying on infrastructure that can be affected by power outages, fuel shortages, vandalism, 
or a farmer plowing a bit too deep. So on the infrastructure end, Starlink should be more reliable than our current fixed internet providers, simply looking at its infrastructure being immune to a majority of the issues associated with terrestrial fiber and microwave radio links, which leaves VSAT. VSAT has two fundamental issues associated with its altitude. The first is latency or the time it takes for information to travel from source to destination. Starlink actually states that its latency is 70 times less than that of geostationary satellites or VSAT. Also, VSAT is more susceptible to weather than Starlink is, so Starlink is more reliable. Accessibility will also be a lot better. A number of new suburbs are not yet serviced with fixed internet, and so you have to go on a waitlist and pray that the service providers deem you worthy. An example is Hayden Park, a suburb right next to the new parliament building, which at the moment only has a choice of telco fiber and liquid homes by Bronix. Starlink will work anywhere. All you need is a clear view of the sky and money for the kit and subscriptions. So again, accessibility, check. Then comes affordability. The price of entry is definitely steep. Officially, it's 600 US dollars for just the kit. Then subs can be anything from 43 US dollars in Nigeria to 110 US dollars in the USA for the residential package. Starlink is unlimited, but with a fair usage policy. You have an allocation of one terabyte a month, and if you exceed this, you'll start experiencing slow speeds. If you use Liquid Home, you're familiar with this. What makes it all worth it is that the max speeds available are 250 megabits per second download and 50 megabits per second upload. In Nigeria, one Starlink user got 238 megabits per second download and 45 megabits per second upload. So here is how it stacks up with the competition. Liquid Home's 100 megabits per second unlimited fiber package is going for 385 US dollars using the current exchange rate. Tel One's 50 megabits per second unlimited package is going for 306 US dollars per month. Utandi charges 230 US dollars for 30 megabits per second of uncapped internet. If you ignore the eye-watering price of the kit, Starlink is much cheaper than the best of the best we can get locally whilst also promising speeds we have not experienced yet in these parts. Once you get past the cost of acquiring, it's actually solid value. Also remember that VSAT setup in Zimbabwe ranges from 100 US dollars to 1,440. So in terms of affordability, it's the best bang for the buck for anyone who was already paying 100 US dollars in internet per month or anyone who relies on unlimited internet. Starlink is a no-brainer. So can I use Starlink in Zimbabwe? Officially, Starlink is not yet available in Zimbabwe, but is said to be coming in 2023. So officially, if you are able to buy the kit, it will not work in Zimbabwe. That said, we have unconfirmed reports of some Starlink users in Zimbabwe who have successfully been able to use the service. Starlink seems to have the world divided into continental regions. So if the service is available in any country on a continent, then it should be available in any country within that continent. At the moment, Nigeria and Rwanda are the two African countries that have Starlink available to them. And according to the Starlink website, regulatory approval is what is stopping it from officially making a presence in Zimbabwe. So technically, it should work here. Starlink also announced global roaming. To be able to use this feature, you actually need to buy new equipment from Starlink, specifically supporting global roaming. And that feature will also cost you $200 per month to use. Such a service will provide Zimbabweans with unofficial access to Starlink in Zimbabwe, but that is not guaranteed. A more sensible hack is buying a Starlink kit destined for Nigeria or Rwanda. Initially setting up with a Nigerian or Rwandan address physically in Rwanda or Nigeria, then paying an additional US $25 a month for mobility which allows you to use the service anywhere in Africa. So mobility only works on the same continent of the address used to order it and set it up. Yes, there will be a slight logistical hurdle of physically setting it up in a country where the service is available first before bringing it here. But if you can, then this is another possible way of using Starlink in Zimbabwe. But I will stress, it's not a guaranteed method.